Hey there, welcome to DIY Projects with Pete. Today we're going to build a concrete dining table with a wood base. This is a fun and simple project that's affordable to build and that I know you can make. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. Let's get started. First step is to build a mold for the concrete top out of melamine. Measure and mark for your cuts according to the plans at DIYPete.com forward slash concrete dining table. Cut out the rectangular base piece for the mold using a circular saw or a table saw. Make sure to lay out how you plan to make the cuts so you have plenty of melamine left over for the side strips of the mold. Next, cut out the two and one quarter inch strips for the side of the mold. A table saw works real well for this process, but it can be done with a circular saw. You'll cut a total of four strips out of the leftover melamine. Then move on to the miter saw and cut the lengths of the side strips down to size. Put the side strips in place and then attach one side at a time using one and a half inch screws. Now the two longer strips are going to overlap the shorter side strips on each end. Always work on a flat surface and pre-drill prior to using the screws. Press down firmly on the base and on the side strip to ensure they are both flush with each other on the bottom. Pre-drill and insert a screw about every six to eight inches, making sure the screw goes in as straight as possible. Continue working around each side of the mold until it is completely assembled. Double check to make sure all four corners and the side walls are squared up, and then grab the steel reinforcement and cut it down to size using a bolt cutter. I like to leave a gap of about an inch between the reinforcement and the side walls around the perimeter of the mold. You may need to make some small bends in the reinforcement so that it lies flat. Then flip the mold to remove debris and use rubbing alcohol and a clean towel to wipe down the forms prior to sealing the edges with silicone. Use 100% silicone caulk around the seams of the mold. Besides sealing the mold, it will give the concrete edges a slight bevel. Then use a caulk rounding tool to round over the bead and to remove excess. Have plenty of paper towels around to help remove excess from the tool and the mold. Then thoroughly look over the mold to make sure you didn't accidentally get silicone anywhere else in the forms. If you did, simply remove it using a paper towel. Then let the silicone set up and cure for about an hour. Next, we'll prepare the work surface for the concrete pour. Cover the table with plastic or an old tarp, and then shim your work surface if needed so it is as level as possible since your garage floor may have a slant to it. Do a final cleaning of the mold and then start to mix up your concrete. This table is six feet long by roughly three and a half feet wide and one and a half inches thick. I bought five bags of Quickcrete concrete mix and ended up using about four and a half bags for the table. Mix the concrete in a large plastic tub with an old shovel or a mason's hoe. Add water as recommended by the manufacturer. I like to mix the concrete until it's about a peanut butter consistency. And if it's too dry, just add a little more water. And if the mixture is too wet, you can always add more concrete until you get the perfect consistency. Transfer the concrete mixture to the mold using a plastic bucket. Spread it out evenly with your hands and use your fingers to pack the mixture into all of the corners and the sides. I typically mix about one to one and a half bags of concrete at a time in the tub. So as soon as you use the concrete up from the first batch, go ahead and start mixing up another. And you can actually mix the concrete a little wetter than I did to help it flow into the mold a bit easier. Spread the concrete around with your hands to create somewhat of an even surface and fill the mold until it is a little more than half full. Make sure to wear rubber gloves while working with wet concrete and a mask during the whole mixing process. When the mold is a little over half full, you can vibrate the concrete by shaking the table or hitting the undersides and sides with a mallet. This is going to start releasing air pockets from the concrete and it's going to help level out the surface. Then grab the steel reinforcement and put it into place. It should lay flat and you may need to make small adjustments to get it to lay flat by bending the metal with your hands. Once the reinforcement is in, fill the mold up the rest of the way with concrete. Spread the concrete over the reinforcement into the sides and throughout the mold. Don't worry about overfilling the mold and you can use a trowel to help move the concrete around in the mold a little bit easier. Next, use a two x four or a scrap board to screed the concrete. Move the board back and forth in a saw-like motion from one side of the mold to the other. This will remove excess concrete and also level out the surface. Go over the entire surface a few times in opposite directions and then use the excess concrete to either fill low spots or just put it back into the bucket. Once everything is nice and level, 
Clean up excess concrete that spilled out of the mold and then vibrate the concrete. This is a big tabletop and without a professional concrete vibrating table or a concrete pencil vibrator, it is going to be nearly impossible to get all the air pockets out, but we'll do as best as we can using normal tools you have around the garage to remove those air bubbles. Slightly lifting the table up and down quickly works really well, but it is heavy, so try to find someone to help you with the process and make sure to lift properly. A rubber mallet also works to vibrate the concrete and you can tap the sidewalls and underside of the mold. The vibration from an orbital sander or a reciprocating saw without the blade are other options to help release the trapped air. And the more time you spend vibrating the concrete, the fewer air pockets you'll have in the finished surface and the fewer voids you'll have to fill with a cement slurry paste. Use a trowel to smooth out the bottom a bit more so the underside has somewhat of a smooth finish. Then clean up the work surface area, sweep up that excess concrete, and put plastic or an old tarp over the concrete to help it cure more evenly. Now you can let the concrete cure and do its thing for the next 48 hours. Lastly, go outside and clean off the tools you used with water and a scrub brush. Now this is important so you can reuse the tools for other projects in the future. After letting the concrete set up a few hours, I did come out in the garage to hard trowel the underside of the concrete. This step is not necessary since the underside will not be seen, but I did want to show the process just in case anyone is interested. The next morning, I came out and misted the concrete with a little water to help hydrate the concrete, which helps it cure properly. I then removed the side walls of the mold, and to do this, simply remove the screws and then use a chisel to help pry the wood away from the concrete. Take your time with this process and make sure to always pry against the wood and never against the concrete. Slowly pry away one sidewall at a time, making sure to put the chisel between the lower part of the sidewall and the base piece. Now, there's a good chance that if you're careful removing the sidewalls, you'll be able to recycle the parts and use it for another table or give it to a friend who you've inspired to build a table just like yours. Once the sidewalls are removed, Lightly ease the edges over with 220 grit sandpaper to reduce the chance of chipping the edges when working with the concrete and allow the concrete to continue to cure for another 24 hours or so before flipping the concrete. And you can lightly mist the concrete once daily or cover it while that concrete is curing. Find at least one strong friend to help flip the concrete. Put some towels down to protect the concrete and then flip it vertically then move to the other side and slowly lower the slab. The slab weighs between 350 and 370 pounds, so be very careful and lift and lower properly. The more people to help out, the better. Remove the base of the mold and examine your new concrete top. It's still a diamond in the rough, but it's your first complete glance at the slab. Allow it to cure a while longer before you sand or polish the concrete. So there's a couple different ways you can finish your concrete tabletop. One is to use an orbital sander, which many of you probably already own or have in your shop. And another is to use a concrete wet polisher with industrial diamond pads that you put on the bottom. Uh, we're gonna use this today just since you probably already own one. And so let's get started and show you the process. Start out sanding the surface with an orbital sander and 120 or so grit sandpaper. This will help smooth out the surface and expose some of the air voids that will need to be filled in a later step. Wear a mask for this process and do this outside since it is very dusty. Lightly round over the top edges and sand the sides as well. The next step is to fill any voids using a slurry mixture, which consists of Portland cement and a little water. Mix up the slurry in a plastic cup and then rub the mixture into the voids using your hands. Wear rubber gloves and have a plastic putty knife nearby to help fill the voids as well. I like to run the paste over the beveled edges to smooth out the edges and to fill additional voids. Now, I ended up having a few more voids than usual since the bigger slabs are a little harder to vibrate and I probably should have spent a little bit more time vibrating the table, but it ended up turning out great and I'm super happy with the finished result. Using a vibrating table or concrete pencil vibrator would have helped out a ton, but I wanted to show the average DIYer how to build this without having to buy any more specialty tools. Once the slurry mixture has set up, go over all the surfaces again with an orbital sander and 220 grit sandpaper to remove excess slurry and smooth out the top. 
Then we flipped the slab to the underside and filled in a couple rough spots and did a quick sanding along the edges so if someone runs their fingers underneath the finish table, it will have a smooth and professional finish. Then I wheeled the table back into the garage and applied a sealer to the concrete. I first applied two coats of concrete sealer to the underside. Next, we flipped the concrete over once more to the top side. At this time, fill any remaining pinholes with a slurry mixture if there are any. Hand sand the excess off with some 220 or higher grit sandpaper, and then use a damp rag to clean up any dust. Saturate the concrete with water and wipe the concrete with a rag so there aren't any puddles. I like to then dilute a food grade concrete sealer with a bit of water in a plastic cup and apply four to five thin coats to the top and sides with a clean microfiber rag. The coats dry fairly quickly, so the process doesn't take long. After applying the final coat of sealer, let it cure for the recommended dry time before applying an optional food grade wax or using the table. Then recruit some strong friends or neighbors to give you a hand moving the slab and wood base into the house. I'd recommend finding about four people to help if you can, and always remember to lift properly. Once in the dining room, we laid the slab upside down and centered the base. To prevent the concrete from ever sliding, we used construction adhesive to glue a wood block on the bottom of the concrete near each corner of the frame. The concrete honestly is not going to budge, but this will ensure it doesn't slide around. Let the glue cure, then put the frame in place and set the concrete top on the base. I found a good deal on six chairs at the World Market, and so we assembled them and slid the chairs into place. All right, thanks so much for tuning into DIY Projects with Pete. I hope you enjoyed today's episode and that it inspires you to build your own concrete dining table. For the complete tutorial, head over to DIYPete.com forward slash concrete dining table. And if you found this video helpful, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. Also, I'd love to hear what ideas you have for upcoming DIY projects, so please comment below with those. Thanks again for watching and cheers from Montana. Please subscribe to the channel to help inspire more DIYers like yourself and head over to DIYPete.com forward slash concrete dining table for the complete tutorial and to download the free plans. Cheers!